All right, so I'm in the last step of lining up my exposures. This is my last one, nudging it into place. So you can see from beginning to end, even though I used a tripod, my subject matter moved quite a bit in the frame. All right, so it's looking pretty good. So now, let's take this back up to 100%. That's where I started. This is where I end. All right. Let's see how that all looks. By going to the timeline, window, timeline, frame animation, make frames from layers, set them all to half a second, not five seconds, half a second, play it forever, get rid of that layer, reverse them, so that they play in the proper order, and then once they're all selected, I can turn my mask back on, right there. And the center of the, the mask is about there. I want that to line up on the tripod so I can move the mask slightly and then fill in that space that got left with black. I can set my guides to match that by first selecting the space inside and then my guides will stick to that. So if that's the middle. That's the crop I want. Okay, so deselect and now let's play it through. This is without any distortion. These are just my exposures lined up by, by hand. Okay, and I'm noticing something. This little hat that appears, I want to get rid of that. So 16 and 17, find out what layers they are. It's this layer and this layer. So I get rid of those frames, drag them to the trash, and then delete these two layers. Play it through. Yeah, I guess it's working pretty well. It bobbles around just a tiny bit, but I'm also looking at where the square is. I'm pretty close to the top there, but I don't think it ever gets cropped off. And I'm very close to the bottom, so I've made it as large as I can within the, um, the frame. I also can question whether I want these final frames or not. I could end it just with that, with the little pom-pom up top, because that fell off. And then I just made a few other little adjustments. So I think I'll just get rid of these last frames and end with this. So again, mark them, delete all those frames. This is why I shot more than I needed. Move them to trash because I'm just going for the clearest kind of build up of consistency. I don't want it to ever appear like things are being taken away, only added. Straightened up. Good. So there I just did by hand what the computer did for me here. 
But in order for the computer to, to do it, it had to distort things, and so it feels like there's a lot more movement in some cases. And everything's a lot taller here. And then so I might as well go with this one just because I did it by hand. All right, so now I've got my crop. I'm going to keep that. And so I use my guides. I use the crop tool. And I'm going to set my crop right inside that square. And that will cut through all of my layers of exposures like a cookie cutter which is very, very helpful. All right, so everything's lined up, everything's cropped. Now, I can process it to look better because these raw exposures, it was made to be very much in the middle. So if I look at the adjustments of any one layer, I'll just show you with this. The histogram is very much in the middle so that I can broaden it. I can do more with it. But instead of adjusting each exposure, I'm going to do it with adjustment layers on the top. So if I say new adjustment layer on the very top, first I'll do levels. Just like the crop cuts through all the different layers, this adjustment layer will process all the layers underneath. So I can adjust the midtones, brighten them up optimize the histogram by bringing the highlights right to the edge. Go to layer, new adjustment layer, I can adjust the saturation. I can intensify some of the colors. I can shift the hue a little bit if I want to. Maybe lighten everything just a tiny bit. Go to layer, new adjustment layer, I can fix the color balance. This was lit with mostly with interior fluorescence, so it's got a lot of yellow that I can mix out of it to try to get to truer colors. Add a little bit of warmth to the highlights. Add a little bit of cools to the shadows. Looking a little cross-processed here. Not bad. I can even go to layer, new adjustment layer, and go all the way to channel mixer. And try to get to a more neutral color mix to really show off the distinct values. There we go, that's helping. Remember Channel Mixer, a very powerful tool. And then, layer over the top. You can add as many of these adjustment layers as you want and they'll affect everything underneath. I can go to Hue Saturation again. I can just take the reds, darken them a little bit, saturate them a little bit. I can take the magentas brighten those up. I can take the yellows brighten those saturate them a little. And I can take the greens and do the same thing. So you have a lot of control, even though we're editing multiple layers at once here. And you'll see that it will apply it to every layer. So those magentas are now really strong. And the yellow, 
the reds. Yeah, and everything looks more balanced. Maybe over the top of everything. Let's pause it here. Do le levels one more time. Just make sure I'm optimizing that histogram. And it feels like I've gotten a little bit too too magenta, so I'm gonna go to another version of color balance. We're going nuts here. Shifting a little bit towards the greens, a little bit more towards the blues. There we go, balancing it out. Looking at different exposures as you play with it. All right. So, now we've got our finished animation. So I need to save it like that. So I'm going to say File, Save As, Carl Fry, Assignment 11, Magpie Mask, Animation. This is a PSD file at full resolution, but I cropped it down. So let's look at what its image size actually is. It's almost five by five inches by 300, okay? So I've saved that. I'm not gonna use this one. Notice the difference that all of the, that adjustment layer color processing did. It really brought everything out. Looks a lot better than my original yellowed out kind of dingy exposures. So now with this, if I wanted to, I could even vignette it all. I could do a layer over the top that I fill with 50% gray and then set it to overlay. Notice it affects everything. And then I can use that to dodge and burn. So I can dodge in the middle a little bit. Ooh, spotlight. That will give me a little vignetting for all of my frames. Uh-oh. When you set um, a different opacity or a different blending mode, you have to select all of your frames and do it all the same to all of them. So I need to set those all to overlay, and then they'll all work. That might be a little extreme. It does, like the Looney Tunes circles or something. And that's the other cool thing with adjustment layers. If I think they go a little too far with the vignetting, as long as I select all of my frames first, though it is kind of cool as a cartoon, <laughs> but it makes it a little too bright, I can just take the opacity of that overlay down a little bit. And maybe instead of dodging so much in the middle, I just burn around the edges. So I burn the midtones with a smaller brush you know, weak exposure. And that will help focus the attention to my subject. And it will treat all of the exposures the same around it. See how that looks. definitely brings all the textures and the colors out. Now it's a 48 opacity there. Here it's 100% opacity. So let me select all of those, make sure it's at 48 for all of them. Oh, it's going to make me do them individually. Okay, that is not worth it. <laughs> Instead, put them all back to 100. 